Yes, welcome to the British Geological Survey. Of course, we're several hundred miles away from where the event happened, where the tremor was uh, most felt, but actually, we have got records of it here. Joining me now is Brian Bapti, who's one of the seismologists here at the British Geological Survey. First of all, when were you aware, aware that there was an event? Well, we have uh, an automatic warning system that picks up the small vibrations from these earthquakes on a network of stations that's distributed all across the UK. So that automatic warning actually occurred only a couple of minutes after the earthquake itself. I personally was aware possibly about half an hour after the earthquake when I was notified by colleagues. And then, of course, we then moved into action and collected as much data as we possibly could. And this was some of the results. Can you talk us through what right. we're looking at here? What we're looking at here are the ground vibrations recorded in different places from the earthquake. So, for example, this signal here, CW, CWF, this is the ground vibration at a place called Charnwood Forest. That's maybe about 30 miles to the west of the epicentre. And what you see here are pretty typical seismometer for this type of earthquake, seismogram for this type of earthquake. We see the initial arrival, um, which is quite small, and then a much larger secondary ar arrival a few seconds later. And, and give us an idea, I mean, how, what are we, is this quite a big event? In UK terms, this is certainly a very significant earthquake. It's the largest earthquake we've experienced for 30, well, for 25 years. Uh, since 1984, there was a magnitude 5.4 earthquake in North Wales. So it's the largest since then. We get an earthquake of this size roughly every 30 years or so, so they don't happen very often. When we do get earthquakes of this size, it obviously causes a lot of concern. They are widely felt. Um, this earthquake has clearly been widely felt all across England and Wales and into the Scottish borders. But for you, of course, it's a scientific phenomenon. You must get pretty excited about this kind of thing. Certainly. For us, um, it helps us understand the scientific questions that we want to understand, like why do we get earthquakes in the UK? One of Which our... was my next question. <laughs> why well, do we ex get Exactly. This here? That's one of the things we're trying to understand. In general terms, one of the reasons we get earthquakes is because we've had a very turbulent geological past, and the earth under our feet has got lots of faults in it, geological faults, and these geological faults are a bit like um, planes of weakness or zones of weakness, and stresses um, can build up on these zones of weakness, and eventually the stresses exceed the strength of the rocks on either side of these faults, and the rocks respond by slipping or failing, and we get an earthquake, and seismic energy is radiated out in all directions. And as you say, it's not very often we get such a large one. Is there any explanation why this should be so much larger? We get the occasional gentle tremor, don't we, um, fairly often, but this not this scale. Yeah, I mean, you have to go back to 1984, to the, 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 next, the previous earthquake of this size, but nonetheless, we do experience earthquakes of this size, uh, so they're not totally unexpected. I mean, we would expect these to occur, but just not very often. Um, to give you another example, the largest earthquake that we know about that struck the UK was about 100 kilometres offshore in the Dogger Bank in the North Sea, and it had a magnitude of 6.1. So there is a potential for really quite moderate by world terms, but large by UK terms. I mean, fortunately, we're in a pretty benign part of the world, so we don't experience devastating earthquakes. But earthquakes of this size occur and have the potential to cause damage.